You're watching Football Daily and here's our 11 of the biggest frauds in football history. Goalkeeper Rene Higuita Flamboyant Colombian goalkeeper Higuita was nicknamed El Loco, the madman, for his entertaining and sometimes ridiculous style. A regular penalty taker and free kick taker who scored three goals in 68 caps, Higuita knocked his own side out of the World Cup in 1990 when a cheeky dribble to the halfway line against Cameroon saw Roger Miller steal the ball and score. But Higuita's greatest moment is built on a lie. Playing against England in 1995, Higuita saw a loose cross from Jamie Redknapp float towards him and launched himself into the air, bringing his feet up behind his head to clear the ball spectacularly. The scorpion kick was subsequently born and the madman's fame was assured. However, England had actually been flagged offside earlier in the move and Higuita attempted the kick knowing that even if he screwed up and conceded, the goal would not stand. It wasn't El Loco being loco, he was just showing off. Defender Sir Alf Ramsey The manager who won England the World Cup, Alf Ramsey had a remarkable coaching career. His first job was at Ipswich, taking them from the third tier to the top flight in just six years. After promotion to the first division, Ipswich would tip for relegation, but remarkably, they won the league in their debut season and the FA came calling. But Ramsey had a dirty secret. Though he had been conscripted into the army at the beginning of World War II, he spent the war on defence duty in Britain. And in 1943, he was given the chance to turn professional with Southampton. Fearing that he was too old to get a contract, Ramsey claimed that he had been born in 1922 and not 1920, and went on to play as a right back with Saints and Tottenham where he won the league. It was only in 1967 when he was knighted that Ramsey finally came clean as a fraud. Defender Chancellor Mbemba Newcastle's Chancellor Mbemba came to England in 2015 as a £10 million signing from Anderlecht. A title winner in Belgium, Mbemba's arrival in the Premier League saw enormous press attention. Not because of the defender's footballing qualities, but because he has four different birthdays. The Congolese was registered with two clubs in his homeland as being born in 1988, whilst his national federation had him down as a 1991 birth. Mbemba's official birthday is the 8th of August 1994, but the player himself has repeatedly claimed that he was born in 1990, meaning that he is anywhere between the ages of 22 and 28. So between 2007 and 2012, Mbemba managed to earn a move to Europe and grow from an imposing 19-year-old into an even more imposing 18-year-old. Either a promising youngster or a soon-to-be veteran, he's football's real-life Benjamin Button. Defender Fabio Middlesbrough fans will have fond memories of Brazilian midfielder Emerson, but his cousin Fabio has disappeared from the record books. Supposedly a younger version of his relative, Fabio was reportedly signed to help him settle into Teesside life in 1996, and made just one appearance in his 14 months with Borough. That game was a 3-0 drubbing of Huddersfield at home, and Fabio's performance as a right wing back has entered into Borough folklore, reportedly running the show, though match highlights don't even show him touching the ball. And a look into Fabio's career stats revealed that he played just one game in 93 for Vittoria Setabull, one game in 94 for Salgueros, and one game in 95 for Desporto Chavez. He later returned to Brazil, where once again, he featured once, this time for third tier Imperatriz. Right midfield, Ali Dyer. Everyone knows the story of Senegalese footballer Ali Dyer, who tricked Graham Souness into signing him for Southampton by pretending to be George Weah's cousin. His first and only game for Saints is one of modern football's greatest jokes, as Dyer ran around in the words of Matt Letizia like Bambi on ice. After that debacle, Dyer disappeared until 2015, when one journalist tracked him down in London. He had given up on football, earned his master's degree in the USA, and spent several years working in Qatar before returning to the UK with a job in the financial sector. Dyer still claims that he played for PSG as a youth, and his family even confirm that George Weah is a close friend. Though until we see the two of them together, we're going to remain very sceptical. Central midfield, Savio and Serico. Ugandan-born German midfielder Savio and Serico had brief periods with West Ham and Fiorentina before loans and bad decisions took him to the heady heights of the Lithuanian League. 
Vincerico struggled so much at the Hammers that he joined in January 2009 and left six months later at a £7 million loss. Realising that maybe he wasn't that great at football, Vincerico turned his hand to cry. In 2012, the German was on holiday in Thailand and like any gap year dickhead, managed to blow through €25,000 in just a couple of weeks. Unwilling to cut his trip short, Vincerico rang his family, telling them that he had been kidnapped and asking for a €3,000 ransom so he could continue to party. The fraudster was arrested and spent the rest of the holiday in a Thai prison. Central midfield, Mazal Bugdov. Everybody has a friend who seems to have watched every minute of every player in world football, and the Times somehow fell into that same trap in 2009. They published a list of football's top 50 rising stars and put 16-year-old Moldovan attacker Mazal Bugdov who turned out to be a made-up player whose career had been played out entirely on internet message boards. Multiple sources fell for the story, with Bugdove linked to Arsenal in the January transfer window, and fans were convinced he was their new superstar before the truth was eventually revealed. The Bugdov bullshit was traced back to an Irish source, and it turned out that his name meant Little Black Donkey, a reference to an Irish story about an injured mule which cost a fortune. Satirical. Left midfield, Medi Abalimba. Our left wing is a truly shite player, but an incredible bullshitter. Medi Abalimba trained at Southend and Derby County, where he was once considered a hot prospect, earning a cool £200,000 a year at the age of 18. But he failed to make good on his early promise and slipped down to non-league football. However, Abalimba continued to live like a superstar, staying in fancy hotels, skipping out on restaurants and bar bills and employing a private chauffeur. The twist? he pretended that he was Chelsea youngster Gail Kakuta, racking up huge debts in the Blues winger's name and stealing credit cards to fund even more spending. After a spree totaling £163,000, Abalimba was caught and sentenced to four years in prison. Kakuta ended up moving to China. We don't know who came off better. Forward, To Madeira. The football and championship manager games have long been revered for their attention to detail, with even youth players scouted and their attributes carefully balanced. And Desportivo de Gouveia's finest, To Madeira, was one of the best youngsters in the game, a fast and skillful attacker who could happily bang 60 goals a season. Madeira seemed too good to be true, and it turned out he was. Antonio Lopez, an engineering student and former Gouveia youth player, was recruited by the makers of the game to scout the size talent. Lopez decided to rewrite football history, turning himself into Madeira, a star just waiting to be discovered. The truth eventually came out though, and Lopez was fired. Oh, and Madeira was removed in an update to the game. Forward. Carlos Kaiser. A fast footballer of the highest quality, Carlos Henrique, nicknamed Kaiser after Franz Beckenbauer, was contracted to Botafogo, Fluminense and Flamengo during his career, but managed to play under 10 games in that career that lasted more than a decade. Carlos loved being a footballer, but hated playing, and employed every trick he could think of in order to stay off the pitch. On joining a team, he would claim to be unfit and spend weeks building up stamina. Then he would pretend to be injured and club doctors in Brazil in the 80s didn't have the scanning equipment necessary to prove that he was lying. Carlos would also use fake mobile phones to stage calls in which he would reject transfer offers from other teams speaking fake English. One time he almost made it onto the pitch but started a fight with a fan so he'd be sent off before getting subbed on. The greatest shithouse faker of all time, Carlos Kaiser is a Hall of Fame fraudster. Therefore, he's got to be our captain. Forward, Pele. Yes, that's right, Pele. Pele is a great of the game and was instrumental in creating the idea of the football superstar. But was he really the player he has always been made out to be? The Brazilian loves to talk about his 1,200 plus career goals, but more than 500 of those were scored in friendlies and are not officially recognised. His actual total is 757, still pretty impressive. 
but even that might be misleading. Before 1971, Santos played in the Campeonato Paulista, a regional tournament, as the Brazilian National League didn't exist yet. 469 of Pele's strikes came against weak opposition in this local competition, and when he played in the genuine top flight, he managed just 34 goals in 84 matches, a strike rate of 0.4 a game. Compare that to Olivier Giroud's record at Arsenal of 0.44 goals a game, and you wonder whether Pele should even be mentioned alongside the likes of Lionel Messi and Johan Cruyff. So there we have it, but what do you guys at home think? Let us know in the comments below. And if if you enjoyed this video, why don't you click here for loads more great content and down there to subscribe. And as always, guys, we'll catch you later.